Coming up on Oakdale Update, we'll talk with the manager of the Washington County 911 Communications Center. We'll also preview a number of exciting events taking place in the city. Stay tuned, Oakdale Update is straight ahead. Welcome to Oakdale Update. I'm your host, Frank Orsello. This is the City of Oakdale's news and information program about your community. I'm now joined by Darlene Panconi, who is the Washington County 911 Communication Center Manager. Darlene, thanks for joining us on Oakdale Update. You're welcome. Good morning, Frank. Okay. Let's, uh, first of all, I want to ask you about yourself. Tell us about yourself, your education, and that kind of thing. Yes, I've been uh, working for Washington County for 14 years, but I have over 25 years experience in 911. Uh, I currently live in uh, Woodbury with my husband and my son. And uh, my education, I went to the University of Minnesota, but graduated from North Dakota State University in uh, Fargo. Oh, good deal. Um, are you, were you a dispatcher at one time? I was. I worked for 14 years at uh, the city of Minneapolis. I was a 911 operator oh. and then a dispatcher and then a supervisor and then a senior supervisor before I came to Washington County. Oh, cool. Okay, so let's talk about 911. When did it start? So 911 is about 50 years old, about as old as me. It, is. it started in 1968 is when the first 911 call was made. Uh, but 911 did not come to Minnesota till the 1980s. And then in the So what do you mean? Where where did it start then? So it started uh, when they first developed the phone number uh, for calling it. It was developed, and I believe it was uh, down south. I'd have to get out my history book, mm -hmm. I should know, because we just had the 50th anniversary. Um, but uh, from there, it was up to the communities and the, the states and regions of whether they were going to adopt 911. And so Minnesota um, adopted it in the 80s. Mm -hmm. And uh, from then, it was just you could call that number, and you would uh, get into a dispatch center. And in the late 80s, uh, E911 or Enhanced 911 was developed, and that's where that phone number was actually linked to an address. Okay, uh, so who's all involved? What communities? Let's say, just take Washington County. Mm -hmm. Who's all involved in that? What, who, do you, who do you deal with? So we dispatch, uh, the Washington County Sheriff's Office is the main dispatch center, and we dispatch for all of Washington County. So we're considered a consolidated dispatch center. We're one of 97 in the state of Minnesota. So there's 97 public service answering points is what they're called, they're PSAPs, and so we're one of 97 in the state. So what does that mean? Up in Ely, Minnesota, if they call 911, there's a communication center there for them? Correct. Uh, so Minnesota's a big state, so there, how many communication centers did you say? 97. 97. So they must cover the whole state, is that correct? That is correct. Okay, so even in the very rural areas, it's 911, huh? Yes. And even with 911 today, this is in the last um, five or couple years, we actually have text to 911. So any place oh. in the state, you can also text to 911. Uh, so that is call if you can, but if you can't call 911, you can also text to 911. So if you can't, don't think it's safe to speak, um, you can text to 911 oh. anywhere in the state. That is slick, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, really. And a lot of people don't even have landline telephones anymore, do they? That is correct. Well, let me ask you this. So I'm... Uh, I'm in my car and I see a car accident up ahead of me and I get on my portable phone and call 911. Do you know where I am and all that? Can you decipher that or what? Do I have to describe where I am? Uh, so with 911, it always helps if you know where you are, you can tell us. But with 911, there are some key factors. That's why we ask people to call 911 is we have some location technology attached to those cell phones and 80% of calls, uh, 
across the nation and particularly here in Minnesota and in Washington County, uh, people who call 911 are call calling from wireless devices. Oh, really? So it is very important that you use 911 instead of a 10 digit number. We can map your location from there and as technology keeps advancing we have what is being called enhanced location technology and that is only available if you call 911. Oh. So it is important that you call that number and yes then we can help figure out where you are with but, some uh, high level of accuracy. That's pretty good because uh, if I'm out on a rural road and I see an accident, I have no idea where I am unless mm -hmm. I've been there before, of course. But Or if you're traveling up to Ely, like yeah, you there said, you, go, you might not Ely, know. Yeah, yes. You get lost. Okay, so <clears throat> where, <clears throat> excuse me, where is the communication center, Washington County's communication center? <clears throat> it is located down at the sheriff's office, uh, the law enforcement, uh, the law enforcement center uh, in Stillwater. So that'd be on the north end of the courthouse building, is that correct? That is correct. So that's the sheriff's office and all that. And mm -hmm. you are attached to the sheriff's office, correct? Correct. <clears throat> okay, so your boss is, <clears throat> excuse me, your boss is who? Uh, I have a commander, yes. <laughs> but Sheriff Starry. Okay, sure. Okay, he's in charge of that. Mm -hmm. Among other things, the sheriff's office has got a lot of, a lot of stuff on their plates, don't they? They cover a lot of things, you mm -hmm. know, the jails and everything, yep, right? Yep, they have a patrol division, a jail division, investigative division, a courts division, yes, many things. Mm -hmm. You know, they have canine, mounted patrol, uh, yes. I had the sheriff on a while back and uh, you enlightened us. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what does it look like inside the communication center? Describe it to us. I mean, the other, there are people all over the place and... What's it like? So if you walk <coughs> in, I think uh, most people will be surprised at uh, how many computer screens are in front of dispatchers. Uh, we have upwards of six screens in front of dispatchers, multiple keyboards and mice. Uh, they can run upwards of 10 pieces of software at one time. Uh, so it's a very multitask that they have to be able to run all that stuff, but it's also all the knowledge, the policies, the procedures, the computer knowledge, the passwords, uh, all the systems that they have to know. Wow. It's quite extensive. Oh, I bet. Uh, how many people are on, on your staff? So at Washington County, we have uh, a total of uh, 33 uh, personnel uh, allotted up to 33. We're actually hiring three very shortly. So, um, but they're a combination of dispatchers and supervisors. Okay. So uh, I saw in one of your in your brochure you have uh, public answering point coordinators. What? what Mm -hmm. Tell me what that's all about. Those are the supervisors. So that's a fancy name for our very skilled supervisors that lead the team of dispatchers. What, is, what do they do? Uh, what do they do? They, uh, they are responsible for dispatching um, at times, but they uh, supervise all the activity in the communication center 24-7. Uh, so does that mean that if a call comes in to a, one of your people answering, did the, does it go to the supervisor to decide what, where it should go? Uh, so, no, anybody who answers the phone is going to take that information. They're going to gather from the person calling uh, what's their location and then what is the matter of their emergency. They're going to put that into our computer-aided dispatch system. Um, and by putting in their location, by telling us the nature of their emergency, we can then figure out which responders to send, really? whether it's uh, law enforcement, uh, fire service, or emergency medical services. So... So emergency and non-emergency, is that correct? That is correct. Tell me the difference between the two. Um, well, uh, I think really anytime somebody needs a response uh, from law enforcement, police, or fire, uh, we want you to call 911. Uh, obviously, some of people's um, issues are going to be life-threatening, and those are emergencies or in-progress crimes are emergencies. But no matter if, you, if it's in progress or not, uh, we still encourage people to call 911. Okay. So over, the, over your career as a dispatcher, um, what are some of the dumb ones, <laughs> dumb ones that you've got? You must have had some. You know, Frank, I love it when people ask me that question because I, I don't really like to say um, people call 911 for the wrong reason. <laughs> so whatever's going on. In their on, mind, it was probably the right exactly, reason. Exactly. It was the right reason, and we're there to help. So. But what, what are some that were, tell us a couple, come on. I don't really, you know, they don't last in my memory all that long. Okay, all right. Okay, fine. Okay, you don't want to just, okay. All right, dispatch, uh, you have 16 different uh, uh, police, fire, and emergencies in Washington County. That's mm -hmm. what, uh, towns or cities, or how does that work? What does yep. that mean? We do take all the calls for all of Washington County. So if your city resides in Washington County, your 911 call will come to us. And then we dispatch all the public responders all the way from Cottage Grove up to Forest Lake. Okay. 
Now, what if uh, I'm in Ramsey County, I'm across Century Avenue, mm -hmm. I'm on the uh, west, west side of it, and I make a call, I'm in Ramsey County and I want to call about something happening over in Washington County across the street. Where, where does it go? Where does that call go? Where does that call go? So go? it'll most likely go to the Ramsey Communication Center, uh, but with the touch of a button, if you call 911, they can transfer it very easily over to Washington County. All your information, including your location, will come over with it. So. Okay. So okay. What if uh, oh, I'm up in Pine County, and I know okay, I get a, uh, I know that there's going to be a crime committed in Washington County. Mm -hmm. How's that work? Uh, you can still call 911 and Pine County can transfer it to us with under the same system, the same easy ease in Is the that network. Right? Yes. Really? All over the state, huh? Mm -hmm. Sweet. Okay, so now, uh, all the, okay, now, why don't you tell us about Code Red. What does that mean? What is that? So Code Red is the name of the notification system that Washington County um, uh, purchased. It's a piece of software that citizens can sign up for, for notifications from your public safety agencies. Uh, they usually go out from the communication center, but uh, individual cities can send out their own non-emergency ones, but emergency ones will always be sent out by the communication center. And so it's often referred to as a mass notification center uh, because we can notify uh, several hundred, if not thousands of people all at once. Uh, so if you go into the link and sign up to be a uh, um, register for the code red system if there is a, an emergency or even a community bulletin or something that your um, city or um, public safety agency wants you to know about we can send that out to you uh, over voice call email and text messaging does that include weather and that kind of thing too? it does I mean? not include weather it has that ability we don't purchase that we really rely on residents to um, listen to their own weather through television okay. or the radio or uh, weather um, weather radio system to learn about the weather. We do have the sirens if you're outside. Yes. So if you're outside, we do have those weather sirens that we will activate in severe weather, but nothing goes out over code red. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting because uh, you say you watch TV and if the weather is going bad. Mm -hmm. I've got cable, TV, satellite. As soon as the weather turns bad, my satellite shuts off. So that doesn't work real well, but that's fine. Well, there's I, your I, indicator. I know, that's exactly <laughs> right. And you do have to sign up for that, is that correct? That is correct. And then there is one other interface that we have with Code Red um, that with that system, if we need to, and f to notify people in a, a higher level disaster, like a evacuation or a shelter in place, it has an interface to the um, federal IPAW system. Uh, so with that, we can actually draw polygons around a map and notify people through the wireless emergency alert system, or called WEA. Mm -hmm. um, so with that, you wouldn't have to register for Code Red, but those are higher level types of incidents. Okay. I mean, if you really want to be a part of the community when we're out looking for vulnerable adults who are missing or missing children or want to know when the police or law enforcement might be looking for a burglary suspect in your neighborhood, sure. I highly encourage you to sign up for Code Red. Oh, that's great. That is great. All right, so give me uh, an example. Tell me, what are... What are some of your calls that come in? Give me an example. I'll say it, just give me a couple of them. Yep, so structure fires. Let's say you have a house fire or an oven fire. You know, you definitely want to call 911. Um, those missing children that I'm telling you about, mm -hmm. if you can't find your little one, mm -hmm. if they get away from you, please immediately call us and we'll start to hand, send people your way. Um, it can be uh, is a motor vehicle accident, a car fire that you see on the side of the road or a brush fire. Um, those are just a few examples. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, your people must be super trained to answer calls, correct? What is their training schedule? What, what, how do they get to do what they're doing? Yeah, you will see this uh, across the nation. It takes up to a year to train a 911 really? dispatcher, yes. Does that mean at a school or at, a, at classes and that kind of thing? There isn't uh, any kind of level of school that most of it, it all of it, is on the job training. It so, is. yeah, we start them off, we teach them when they come in, we start them on some certification training, uh, just learning all the different software systems that they're going to have to run. Uh, then they go through their first phase, which is call taking, how to answer that phone call and learn about all the different um, process call processing um, questions for the different types of situations people will have. Mm -hmm. uh, from there, they stay there for a little while, then they move them to law enforcement to learn how to dispatch law enforcement, uh, and then over to fire and EMS. And this takes about a year, and you will wow. see that across the nation is pretty consistent. I, that really sounds, so they are very well trained, mm -hmm. right? Um, what is the psychological 
uh, on on these people. I mean, they they must hear some pretty nasty things coming in, huh? They do. It's you know they are the truly first first responders, and they are the first one to hear that mother crying or uh, that wife upset. You know, when uh, some their husband's having a heart attack, they they hear that, and they don't often hear what happens at the end. Mm. Uh, and with uh, the 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 drug overdoses and all of that, it, it is getting more and more. Like I say, did I started 25 years ago? It didn't happen that often in my early on career to talk to somebody who was suicidal, where we hear it uh, today um, multiple times a day. Oh, wow. uh, so it does take a toll on them. You know, they're strong individuals, they, they do it for the right reasons, and they're there to help. Um, but we do have to take care of them at the same time. Jeez. So we have to start paying more attention to their mental welfare. Do they, okay, so, um, you know, you say they don't always know what happened on a particular call that they've mm -hmm. gotten. That's kind of important, isn't it, to know that they know? Is there a way that you can get the word to them, or don't you want to? Um, no, we do, and I, we, it's getting better. You know, I think our partnerships with all of our public safety agencies uh, across the county, um, they know what that means to the, the dispatchers, and it's definitely getting better that we start sure. that communication. And a lot of times that communication is that, you know, we save somebody. We start that early on CPR, you know, over the phone with uh, lay people who are standing there when they see those uh, individuals have a cardiac arrest, and to find out later uh, that they were released from the hospital and they're 100% um, okay, it's a very gratifying. Yeah, it is very good. Yes. Do you uh, do, um, do your your people coordinate with uh, Ramsey County people at all? I mean, is there, do, you, do you have classes together, or do you have seminars together, or anything like that? We do. Um, the state of Minnesota, you know, uh, has uh, very good connections across the state with our other dispatch centers. Um, there's a governance structure that in the. the that goes by regions across the state. Uh, we're in the metro region here, and so is Ramsey County, so we coordinate with them quite a bit. Uh, and then at a state level, the Statewide Emergency Communications Board uh, brings us together under whether it's the Next Generation Committee uh, or things on iPods that I spoke of, mm -hmm. uh, our armor radio system that is a statewide uh, radio system for public safety. So yes, we coordinate very much on those at regional levels and statewide levels. Is this involved with uh, federal at all? Are you involved with federal? I don't know. Are they involved with you guys, I guess? The uh, federal government? Yes, yes. Um, in ways, yes, in regards to uh, iPods and FirstNet and those type of programs, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, give me an example here. So we have, uh, um, you get a call in and somebody says there's a, a, a guy with a gun held up in a, in a room or in a house or something. So who would you notify then? Where, where, where does the first uh, call go to? So the first call? Yeah, so that, I mean, it comes into the 9 and what do they do? So they do they get a hold of? Yep, they're going to ask them uh, where they are, uh, what's going on. They're going to enter that information, like I stated earlier, into a computer-aided dispatch system. Uh, we basically give it a call processing code, which then sends the right responders, and the law enforcement dispatcher will dispatch them. If anybody is injured, we also would start EMS and potentially a fire for first responder rescue. Uh, so... You know, all that computer technology, their training to know, ask the right questions gets the right responders uh, going. Boy, that's got to be really important. They better know what they're asking, right? Mm -hmm. Very important. So uh, in a case like that, you'd probably want the SWAT team out, a SWAT team, I suppose. So how, how does that word get to them? So, you know, SWAT team is a special um, force uh, or program that uh, they only come in at the request of local law enforcement that if a situation rises to that level mm -hmm. and usually it's a barricaded suspect or something like that mm -hmm. um, so yeah it's not going to be automatic mm -hmm. that SWAT gets involved okay. and yeah local law enforcement incident commander would talk to a SWAT commander they discuss uh, whether the situation was right for them mm -hmm. and then they would be deployed and so the dispatcher must off, off, off must always have to decide do you need uh, the police, fire, and EMT, or, or what do you need? I mean, you know, they have to decide that and, and send that word out. Is that correct? That is correct. By the questions that they ask, then we determine, yeah, who is needed, whether it's law enforcement, fire services, or the EMS, the paramedics. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Well, I'll tell you, we're running out of time, but I just have one good question to ask you. Mm -hmm. Reiterate to us, who and when, when do you call 911? 
So my answer to this question is you call 911 anytime you need a response from law enforcement, fire, or EMS. We really want you to call 911 for three big reasons. And those reasons are is that 911 is a protect, protected network. Uh, it's secured, um, so if something were even to drop, it could be represented. We have that connection with the other PSAPs, whether it's across the county uh, boundaries or anywhere in the state of Minnesota. Mm -hmm. So that is a nice uh, communication link that to get you the fastest response possible. Uh, the second reason is that advanced location information. So only through 911 do we have a way to get to that advanced location because most people are, are calling from those wireless devices. And number three, in the state of Minnesota, uh, there's a Minnesota state statute that gives you a level of data privacy uh, protection if you call 911. Mm. That does not pertain to if you call a 10-digit number. Sure. You know, uh, I'm up on Lake Superior, middle of Lake Superior, and uh, the boat capsizes, but I get on my cell phone, and I can call 911 and they'll get it. <laughs> I mean, you know, will it work? Uh, they should as long as, you know, with any device, you know, you have to have power, yes. and then you have to have cell coverage. Uh, if you have those power and a cell coverage, then yes, you are going to get into 911. And through that advanced technology, we're going to be able to help determine where you are. So yes. I'm telling you, I'm in the middle of Lake Superior someplace. We huh? have found people in canoes oh, and in boats. Sweet. Yep. You know what, uh, getting back to this uh, calling 911, um, this is all also for, give you an example. If I want to call my friend, Police Chief Bill Sullivan, just to talk to him, do I call 911? Uh, no, then you could call the local Oakdale Police Department. Call the police department, then mm -hmm. they'll transfer me to That is correct. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, <laughs> listen, we're out of time now, and I want to thank you for joining us, and you enlightened us on 911. It was a pleasure, Frank. Thank okay. you. Thank you. We're almost out of time, but first, here are a couple of reminders. From November 1st to April 1st, there is no on street parking between midnight and 5 a.m. And a reminder that the indoor market returns November 23rd at the Discovery Center at 4444 Hadley Avenue from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. You'll find over 20 local vendors offering a unique variety of items, including baked goods, jams, cheeses, meats, sweets, jewelry, and much more. It's a perfect place for your holiday shopping. Again, the first indoor market is on November 23rd in December, the dates are December 7th and the 21st. That's all we have time for this month's Oakdale update. For everyone at the City of Oakdale, thanks for watching.